So as always, let's start by reviewing what we did last time. So we were discussing confidence interval estimation. Essentially what it means is that you want to estimate uh, a parameter about the population, but you don't want to give one number for it, one point for it. You want to give an interval that with a certain probability, this parameter of the population lies in this interval. So you are not only guessing the parameter of the population, you want to give your guess a very quantitative measure that how confident you are that this is the value of the parameter. And obviously you're not gonna give one particular value. You give an interval and that the parameter lies within this interval and you give it a certain probability that it lies in here with a certain probability. So this is the problem you want to estimate a population parameter. Let's say its value is theta, which is, for example, maybe unknown for you, to you. What could be an example for it? So for what we have been doing mostly, the example would be the mean of the values of a certain quantity in the population. Population mean is one such characteristic or one such parameter of the population. And you want to estimate it using a sample. So you have a sample estimate. Let's denote it with theta hat. Example would be the sample mean, which estimates the population mean. And for what we did last time and for what we will be doing mostly later in next few lectures, there are certain assumptions about the sample estimate which you make well, by assumption, I mean that the procedures which we will be developing will depend on if the sample estimate fulfills these conditions. So what are those? That it should be unbiased. That is, if I make the average, the probabilistic average, uh, of the sample estimate that is equal to the population parameter I'm trying to estimate using this sample estimate. Because this guy is a random variable. And this is one. And the second is that the probability distribution of this random variable, which is a, the sample estimate, is symmetric. So under these conditions, if I, I can draw the probability distribution, it will look like, I'm gonna draw it looking like a normal, but it doesn't have to be a normal, it only has to be symmetric. Somewhere here is its mean, which is equal to the population mean or the population parameter which you are after. And you have the symmetric probability distribution. Now you define 
let's say a tolerance interval because every time this theta hat is going to take a different value every time you make a sample so you don't know which one if you do the sampling once which one is going to appear in your sample when you make a, an estimate using your sample it will hit any point over here so you don't know which one so it defines a tolerance interval such that there is a, a let's say beta probability there is beta probability that your estimate your point estimate lies within this tolerance interval and you're making it around this central value so for so you define a probability and this will give you a certain size of this interval symmetrically distributed because you're making it around the central value and this probability distribution is symmetric so it will be symmetrically distributed around this central value and for example you could say 90 percent then what you are essentially saying is that when you will make the point estimates using a sample 90 percent you have a 90 percent chance that your estimate would be within this interval and because of the symmetry over here you will have that from the central value which is equal to the population uh, parameter you're trying to find out let's say if i call this theta a well theta b and this theta a so my this interval is from theta a to theta b and this theta minus uh, theta a this width which is equal to this width because of the symmetry this let's call this give it a name let's call it margin of error this is what it is called so theta minus theta a would be equal to some number and that number would be same as this because this length is same as this length so that means i can write i want to find that given a probability what is this length i can write this theta b as theta plus margin of error and theta a as theta minus margin of error so central value something added to it and something subtracted to it i want to know up to which level which point i have to go which value of theta gives me these boundaries so that i can do by finding this margin of error and what happens is that in one particular sampling you get a value of theta one so why am i doing this why we need this in one particular sampling you will get one value let's say this one or this one or this one all of them are possible the point is that every time you get a value within this interval which we have called tolerance interval you can make well 
let's go this way. When we, why we need this? When we make an estimate, in one particular sampling, you get one value of the point estimate. This theta hat, let's say, let's call it in one case is theta one. Then if you make, make an interval around this point estimate, say this theta one of the same size as your tolerance interval. So that would be two times margin of error. That is consider the interval Uh, whatever your value is, theta minus margin of error. So you got this point estimate. You make an interval of same size as you had computed, which we were calling tolerance interval, and call this confidence interval. So in what sense this is confidence interval? So every time you will get a different value. If your value of your estimate lies within your original interval, then when I make an interval of the same size, of this size, then my population parameter, which I'm after, will be contained in this interval. Because it's of the, the same size. If I'm over here, I haven't crossed this boundary on the uh, left-hand side, then the right-hand side of this interval will contain the uh, population parameter. Because then over here, this, this length is same as uh, let's use this color, this length. So they will overlap. But if I land outside the interval, then when I make a interval of same size, then I will miss the uh, population parameter. So I can write it, probably that would be more clear. If this theta hat is contained in tolerance interval, which we had defined, this means that your point estimate that your population uh, parameter will be contained in the confidence interval you have created this guy, this is confidence interval. This is tolerance interval, which is from um, theta minus margin of error and theta plus margin of error. Well, this one is for a particular point estimate. On the other hand, if theta hat misses this, if your point estimation doesn't lie in the tolerance interval, then your mean, your population parameter will miss the confidence interval you have created around it. It will be somewhere here or here.
depending on if you land on the left hand side or the right hand side. So this means that getting the value of the size of this original interval, this one, getting the value of the size of this, which is equivalent to getting the value for margin of error, because the size of this thing is just two times the margin of error. For the given probability, this thing you compute for a given probability. Tolerance. Wait, I'll come back to you. For a given probability, this gives you a confidence interval around a point estimate that the population parameter is contained within this uh, 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 this confidence interval you have created or not with a certain probability. So getting the value of margin of error gives you or lets you build lets you construct a confidence interval around your point estimate. So you took a sample, you made uh, some computation on it, it will give you one number. So that's called the point estimate. But you don't want to give one point, you want to give an interval. So it lets you construct a confidence interval around the point estimate so that the population parameter lies within this interval with a given probability. So you have made your estimations very precise in very precise, it's still probabilistic, but the probability has been expressed in very precise terms. You give a, you make one point estimate and you make around it an interval. And with this interval, you associate a certain probability, beta or 100 times beta percentage. So everything has been quantified. So there was a question. What was the question? Yes, sir, I don't understand uh, the concept of uh, ME. Sir, like from QB to QA, we have confidence interval, right? And outside we have the area of- Well, the thing is, the, the difference, what is the difference? Let's see what's the difference between these two interval. This first interval I made that was around the central value. That was around the population mean, let's say which is same as the mean of the sample means. But you don't know it. You don't know what it is. So you don't know where this interval would be. It's just, I'm building it theoretically. If you knew, then by, by definition, this is built around the central value. On the other hand, and this, once you have, once you have computed its size, our goal is to compute this size. Once you have computed this size, one side of it is already tells you what's the size of margin of error. This is margin of error. That you fix a probability that how many of the uh, point estimates, what percentage of point estimate lie within this interval, there will be a probability associated with it. So you fix a probability so that fixes, one moment, that fixes the size of it. But this is the interval which is centered around the central value, around the mean of the mean. But when you in actuality make, pick one sample, you will land somewhere else. You will land, for example, here. And if you land here, you don't know about this interval. But if you could compute this size, 
then you can make a new interval around this value of the same size. And this interval will be containing the a population parameter which you are after if where you landed was within the original interval. So the only difference between those two is where they are centered. Since you don't know where the population mean is, that thing you are trying to estimate. So you cannot tell exactly where this interval lies. You will only be making con uh, in confidence intervals. And the confidence interval tells you that if the mean is going to be in this interval or not. But to compute this confidence interval, you need to know something about this original interval and its margin of error. Yeah, so another question? So let me write down the a kind of an algorithm what we are doing step to find to give a confidence of interval interval estimate you're still trying to estimate but but by giving a confidence of interval to give a confidence of interval estimate for a population parameter. So what you can do, you make a point estimate. Let's say you get a value theta hat then you should be knowing what is the probability structure, what is the probability density of these point estimates. These are random variables. You got one value, but you know that every time you will get a different value. You need to know about the probability distribution. Using that, you can compute the margin of error with a certain percentage, let's say with Y percentage, call it ME, using the probability distribution for this point estimator. Once you have this, you just build up this interval. This would be your confidence interval. Yeah, what's your question, Abdullah? Confidence interval with Y percentage, and that means you can say that I have made, I just computed one value, and since I knew something about the probability distribution, I can tell you that this interval has a Y percent chance of containing the true value of the population parameter. So was there a question? Um, sir, what is the difference between confidence interval and uh, tolerance interval? Tolerance interval is just something which I gave a name to give this original interval which I made. The difference is that the tolerance interval is being made around the central value, around the uh, population parameter while the confidence interval is being made, it's of the same size as the tolerance interval, but it's being made around the point estimate you got. Okay, all right. thank you, sir. So let's put this theory. We had discussed it last time as well, but it was just a repeat it, because it's a kind of a important concept which will be used again and again. 
Y percentage is just the probability expressed in percentage terms. So you will have to give. So for example, you can say, you can put Y to be 90. Then you are giving that you are saying that I am confident with a 90% probability that the population parameter lies within this confidence interval. You fix this probability and that gives you this, you compute it using this probability. So the size of the confidence interval depends on with how much probability you want, you want to give to this interval. How much sure you want to be that your population parameter lies within this. So let me take a two minute break. Don't go away and I'll be back and do an example. So uh, the applications examples, we can categorize them into different commonly occurring cases. So I'll categorize them into different cases and let's consider this case first that you are estimating the confidence interval every time we will be doing the same thing but in this case you are doing it for the mean of population so this you have fixed that what kind of population characteristic you are after and you have certain knowledge about the population distribution. When population is normally distributed, most of our cases will be when the population is normally distributed and it's variance or standard deviation is known. So you know almost everything about, because once you know that it's normal, there are only two parameters over there. It's variance and it's mean. Variance is known to you, you don't know the mean and you want to estimate what is the mean. So let's apply the theory which we had discussed to this case and see it using an example. So suppose you have uh, marks for a very large test taken by a large number of people. And you know that the marks are normally distributed. with the standard deviation 30. So this case applies and you want to know what is the mean. You pick a sample of nine uh, tests and you note down their marks. So I'm just randomly writing, well not randomly, I have noted down in my notebook. You pick some random, randomly chosen nine tests and suppose these are the numbers you get. You make a, a point estimate. Point estimate which is just the sample mean. So you just add these numbers and divide by nine. This gives you 189.2. And you know by our central limit theorem that no matter what the size of the sample is, if the population is normally distributed then the sample mean is going to be normally distributed. So I know something about the distribution of these. I got one number from this distribution, but I know how they, are, how they would be distributed.
and suppose I want to put a confidence interval of 90%. Let's in general write, in general, you would be looking for 100 times beta percent. In this case, beta is 0.9. So beta is the probability, you multiply it with 100, you get the probability in percentage terms. Now, uh, you, yeah. So you have the conclusion derived that x bar is normally distributed? Oh, this is the central limit theorem. if your population is normally distributed, you pick a sample of any size, the sample mean would be normally distributed. And if you don't know about the population distribution, if you pick a large enough sample size, even then the sample mean would be normally distributed. But in this case, we know, I know it already because the population was given to be normally distributed. So you know that it's something like this. There is some mean which you don't know, but you know that the shape would be like this. And you also know the, the size of this thing because you know, you know the width, but you don't know where it is located because you know what is the, uh, uh, width of, if these are the sample distribution, this is just this. So sigma was given to us, it was 30. So this is 10. I know what is the width of it, it's 10. So using this, I'll be able to make some probability conclusions. So now what you want to do, you want to put around this, find this number x hat b, this is x hat equal to mu, here x hat is equal to x hat b. Similarly, there's a number x hat a, symmetrically placed on the two sides of the mean so that this probability, probability, this total probability, you have created this interval so that this total probability is 0.9. So this is what you are doing. You have x hat b, mu plus some number, which I'm calling margin of error because that's how I define it define it and what's the definition of this margin of error is defined through this probability that the probability of mean turning out to be between this number and this number is equal to beta which in our case is 0.9. But let's just do it for a general case first. So in our case, it's 0.9, but it could be any probability you want to assume. So for example, if you want to be more sure, you can say, I want to consider the 95% confidence interval or 99%. It's up to you. So the goal is now, but we know so I want to find this number. We have this thing that I can create a standard normal variable Z. Where again, this Sigma X hat is just the width of the normal of the uh, sample means. 
so that the probabilities, if I compute the probability for x hat variable or the z variable, where I compute the z using this formula, they will be same. So I will have, if I have a, I can compute the values, corresponding values from here using this formula so that these probabilities are equal. So all I'm saying is that there would be, I can make, I can superimpose on it a z variable so that this width in this new scaling is equal to one and this number is zero. So there will be a corresponding ZB and ZA over here. So I can find this ZB and then turn it back into this variable X hat using this formula. So this is equal to, because this number we said is equal to beta. Where ZB, if you look at it, is X bar B minus mu. And but X bar B, we just said is this formula I'm using here minus mu. So this implies that this margin of error which I'm after. This is the thing which I'm looking for. This can be computed by just this thing. So in other words, I just need to find that value of z so that if I make zb and this z a is equal to minus zb because they are symmetrically distributed around zero. So I have to find that value of zb so that the probability, this probability is equal to my desired number beta. And if I have that zb value of zb, I can just compute margin of error from there. So there was a question. Sir, yeah. sir, after getting the value of XB and then getting the value of XA, we just minus uh, them to get the margin of error. Say again. Sir, yeah, after getting the value of simple, XB. Simple algebra. What I did was that the Z is defined by subtracting the value of the mean. So that's the logic of this uh, this uh, standard normal variable. You subtract you, your your mean is at some point. You subtract that thing from your variable so that the mean is pulled to zero. And then you divide by the sigma x bar. And the effect of this is that your, your standard deviation of this new variable becomes one. And the whole point of doing is just that everything is written in terms of standard normal and you can look it up in tables. The probabilities you can look, look up in tables. You don't have to compute every time using different different uh, uh, standard deviations and means. So I just say, and this is what it means, that if I compute this probability, it's same as this probability if I convert, if I just use this change of variable. That Z A is replaced by a Z A computed by putting X A over here. So that's what I'm saying. So all I'm saying is that you want to find this XB. So instead of XB, let's find ZB. And what is the ZB I'm finding? That ZB so that this area between ZB and minus ZB is equal to my desired probability, beta. So in other words, I want that value of ZB that value of Z, 
and I'm calling it ZB, which gives me a probability of beta. But this would also be, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. But let me just draw it here again. There's this ZB minus ZB. There's zero because it's the standard one. And this area you are saying is beta. So this statement, I can find the ZB by also saying the probability of Z being less than minus ZB and greater than ZB. So this total probability that is either less than minus ZB or it's more than ZB. What would it be? It would be just B because the total is one and this part is beta. So this probability would be one minus beta. And give it a name, let's call it alpha. Now, because it's symmetric, this was our assumption. That means this thing, this area would be same as this area. They are equal. So I can, instead of writing this, I can write two times, because I have a probability coming from here and a probability coming from here, and they're both equal. So two times the probability of Z being more than ZB is equal to one minus beta or alpha. So from here, your required condition is that Z, this critical value, this is called the critical value of Z. So that value of Z for which the probability from here is equal to alpha by two. Wait, what is alpha? If beta were 90, alpha would be, well, I'm writing probabilities. If beta were 0.9, then alpha would be just 0.1. So over here, you don't put 0.1, you put 0 0.05. However, in if you are looking up the, these things in tables, in tables, usually they uh, so, sometimes they give these critical values, but it's also uh, nice to know. So that's, well, because of this equation, this critical value is written like this. Z alpha by two, this implies that value of Z for which probability of Z being more than this value is alpha by two. But this same statement you can write as probability of Z being less than ZB because many a times you have a table with cumulative probabilities. So what is a cumulative probability? You pick a value here and then you just count this area. Uh, this area. So that means what is the probability of this variable being less than this number? This was more than this number. So what would this be? This would be just one minus this. So I can write it like this. So one minus, uh, one plus one minus alpha over two. So it's 0 0.5 plus one minus alpha is beta, beta over two. So if you're looking up in a cumulative table, then this is the cumulative probability. Then you are putting in that Z is less than Z alpha by two would be written as 
0.5 plus beta over 2. So for beta is equal to 0.9, how would you find this Z2? Let's write it because alpha is 0.1. So let's write it 0.05. This is, this probability should be 0.95. And then what would be the margin of error? For this, I just go back to this relation, this defining equation. That's why I did all this work because I wanted to compute margin of error. And that's very easy to know. Once you have computed this number, this value of Z, you just multiply it by the sample, the, uh, the standard deviation of the sample mean. So these are called the critical values for a certain probabilities. And usually you are sticking to some number that you want to say it with 90% confidence, 95, 99, or maybe 80. So you may as well make a table. All you are doing is computing this, this Z for a certain probability from the standard normal. So you can make once and for all this table and start putting these thing over here. And you just have to multiply this critical value with the uh, with your uh, standard deviation of the sample mean. Like for our case, we are saying that that the uh, you want 90% confidence. So we need to use this formula. So again, going to this calculator, normal distribution calculator. This is my uh, standard normal, mean zero standard deviation one. And I want cumulative probability uh, to be less than, cumulative probability to be 0.95 that Z is less than a particular value. Wait, this wasn't connected. So I want 0.95. And it gives me a number 1.64, 1.645. So that means this Z five. So what it is saying? It's saying in this standard normal, there's zero, there's a one here. If I go to 1.645, this probability, is 0 0.05. So that's that. So margin of error simply becomes 1.645 times 10. So 16.45. And my confidence interval becomes what was my mean? Let me see. 189.2. So it's just 189.2 minus this number up to 189.2 plus this number. So I can Mm 
189.2 minus 16.45. So 172.75 up to plus 16.45 plus 16.45 205 0.65 so this is the interval i'm not now giving an estimate of the exact mean of the test scores i'm saying the mean lies within this with 90% confidence It's not a very big window. It depends on what was the standard deviation of the original things and how big your sample is. And yeah, if you want, you can increase your confidence. So suppose you say, I want to say with 95% confidence. How would the interval change? Your beta is now 0.95. So your alpha is 0 0.05. And this time you need to compute so that Z for which the probability of being more than this number is 0 0.05. And in this calculator, when I'll put, I'll be doing, I can do it also. Z less than, so according to our formula, 0 0.5 plus beta over 2. So it's just going to be uh, 1 minus this number. So it's going to be 97.5. So I just go to the standard calculator. And it gives me a number 1.96. So Z 0 0.025 is 1.96. And my margin of error then becomes 1.96 times 10 is 19.6. And before it was, the margin of error was 16. So it has increased by three, num by three. So this will be pushed new confidence interval would be somewhere around 169 to 208. You can compute the exact values. All you have to do is take the mean, your point estimate in your first calculation and subtract this new one which you have computed. Yes, what's the question? Uh, let's go by Ali Zan first. Uh, sir, I want to ask uh, that if I can try a different, uh, like the same method, but with different working, like I can first do uh, a mean, basically XB minus 189.2 divided by 10 is equal to the Z value, which is 1.645, then calculate XB. And by, like, is that correct? Uh, you you went over way too fast because I can't see anything you're writing. Can you say it again slowly? Sir, uh, the formula that we have is the XB minus mean upon standard deviation, right? Yeah. That's basically how we calculate the Z value. So yeah. we know the Z value, which is 1.645 by, you know, checking the table. And yeah. By, by checking the table. So yeah. we have 1.645 is equal to xb minus 189.2 divided by 10 in that yeah. you can find 
the value of x b, and then similarly we can find the value of x a. No, you can't do that because you know you cannot do x b and x a uh, because what's the uh, thing? The thing is that you don't know the mean value. You don't know the mu. So you are not computing uh, the interval around the mu. You are computing the interval around your point estimate. You're using the same formula, but uh, uh, you're using it just to get margin of error. And then you compute a new interval around your point estimate. Well, yes, I, 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 uh, why is it multiplied by 10? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you guys probably just stop listening at some point. This formula, see, this formula. This was 10. Why? Because this was sigma, which was given to you. Because in this case, we know what is the population standard deviation. But here goes in the standard deviation of the population mean, which is this. So this was 30 and this was this. That's why I multiply it with 10. Just for fun, I can find what would be the 99% confidence level. So this is like, you are very, very sure. And let's see how much, how big of an interval you have to get that. Yeah, well, beta is 0 0.99. So I'm looking for a number. Let's say ZB, I was calling it. I'm just not writing a, a numbered index below it. But if you want that number index, that would be 0 0.01 over 2. So it would be 0 0.005. Z is greater than this ZB is 0 0.005. But this is also same as Z less than ZB equal to 99.5, So if I put it in here, first I have to erase it. This gives me a z score of 2.576. That means this number, what was it? 2.576. So my margin of error. is 25. It's not that big. It's a bin of size 20 around my mean and I'll be almost certain that the mean is going to be between uh, within this interval. And I have that made, so you, you should think about it that you have made just only one point estimate. You just picked one sample and based on that, you're able to give a probability, you were able to give an interval within which you can make the statement about the population mean. Now, let's uh, continue. So suppose you are, let's consider this case too. Now you have population is still normal, but mean and standard deviation both are unknown. In the previous case, you knew this, but now you don't. 
and you want to put a confidence interval for the mean so standard deviation or in or variance is unknown that's the only complication and you are trying to guess again the mean and by giving a confidence interval so again you pick a sample and get a point estimate since you it is still given to you that the population is normal so you know that this sample mean is still a normal distribution it's just that you do not know any of its parameter of this normal distribution and your goal is to compute the margin of error given a certain tolerance level but to do that you need to know in the previous method we needed to know the width which in this case we do not know so we had to find this thing the standard normal and given this width but now we don't know this well the idea is get this get a point estimate for this for this from the sample itself well we know that if i make the sample variance which just has uh, you just take the values of the sample take the difference from the sample mean square them and take the sum and divide by the uh, number of entries minus 1 that's the only difference or this thing which we call the sample standard deviation then we know that this thing will be equal to population standard deviation so we don't know the population standard deviation but we can sort of estimate it with this s it won't be exactly that it would be uh, distributed around it so we can make a new variable instead of having this random variable i define this random variable in complete analogy to this except that instead of putting the a constant standard deviation i put in this s this estimate of the standard deviation the only thing would be estimate of the standard deviation but this s is the standard deviation of the population well when i compute this standard deviation this is the standard deviation of the sample but this is not the standard deviation of the sample mean which i know if i want to become like that i should divide by this under root 10 because that thing is sigma over under root 10 and this guy i am replacing with an s so to define this new variable this is called just the t variable or student's t variable that's just its name where this thing is coming from sample
and now I know I have created a new random this t now is not a normal variable. Because it was the sample mean which was normal. Z was normal, standard normal, because X bar was a normal variable, the sample mean. Here you have a normal variable, but you're dividing it by some other random variable. We know this follows. The chi square and minus one distribution. So you are dividing a random variable by another random variable. So you get a new random variable. And if you know the distribution of this guy and of this guy, you can probably compute the distribution of this. And that again, for us, that's not the problem for us because we are given tables for this new variable, the student's t variable or the calculators. So we're gonna use this new distribution. So T is not a normal variable, rather it is a new kind of random variable with probability distribution which is slightly different, not a lot. From normal. So if normal looks like this, it would be also, it would probably be a bit thicker at some points compared to normal. And as n becomes large, this almost becomes like a normal variable. So it's slightly different from normal. However, you still have, it's still symmetric. So probability distribution of this T variable is symmetric around a central value, which is still at zero. The central value of this, well, they all have an index here because they come from dividing by S and S has an index because that's the chi-square distribution. But they all are around zero. So again, I will use the same logic. I'll just use this equation and from this equation, I have T n minus one S over under root N is X bar minus mu. And again, I'm looking for this XB here, which is a critical value for a certain probability. And this XB I'm looking for, which gives me a certain probability. So I'm computing this margin of error. So when I put this over here, this will translate to some value of the student's T variable related like this. X bar is mu plus margin of error minus mu. So this gives me margin of error. So the idea is that you are again computing the margin of error exact using exactly the same formula, except that last time you computed a critical value of Z and multiplied it with the known of Z, multiplied it with the, with the known uh, standard deviation of the sample mean. Now, 
you will compute the margin of error by computing the critical value of the t critical value for a certain probability and multiply it with your estimate point estimate of the standard deviation of the sample mean. This whole thing is the point estimate of the standard deviation of the sample mean. Only S is the point estimate of the standard deviation of the population. So again, what would be the critical value? You compute this thing. That this T n minus one is greater than a certain number. So that the probability, if you want to put a beta is equal to 0.9, you have this distribution. And this is some critical value. So that this probability of t being more than this is equal to alpha by two, where one minus beta is alpha. Exactly the same logic goes on. I'm not repeating all the logic, exactly the same thing. It's all, my whole logic was depending on making these diagrams. It's just that this diagram will look slightly different, but you're doing exactly the same thing. So you put this equal to alpha by two, or if you want to compute the cumulative probability using cumulative probability, then this is less than this number. So this would again be 0.5 plus beta by two. So you look up, you provide a certain value here and look up in the table or using a calculator, what would be the value of T? First, you have to provide the degrees of freedom, this N minus one, which depends on your sample size. When sample size is bigger, your estimate of the sample stand of the standard deviation is becoming more and more tight. And then it becomes looks more and more like just the normal distribution. So we are running out of time can't exactly do an example for this that we will do next time. Any question? Uh, sir, the last one part in the bar of the so exactly same thing I'm doing, which I did for the, uh, when I knew the standard deviation of the sample means, because I was given the standard deviation of the population from that I can compute the standard deviation of the sample mean. In that case, I can use this formula and that gives me the margin of error use, uh, using this formula. The problem only occurs when I don't know this thing. When you don't know the standard deviation, you estimate it by using the point estimate of the sample standard deviation and compute it using this formula. And all the logic, all the things which I'm doing are exactly same as in case of the normal, except that the diagram looks different. So that means the numbers which you will get for the T will be different from what you get from for the Z. But that will be the job of the calculator. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is do exactly same except that pick a different calculator. So if you get the idea what was there for the uh, Z variable, it's exactly the same for T variable. And actually 
the more we'll we'll do more examples of different kinds, and every time you're just picking a different uh, probability distribution, but you're doing the same thing. So we will do the example next time. And is there another question? So uh, let me ask, do you need, uh, I'm going to upload a homework right now. Do you need uh, to have, do you need, should I provide you some example solutions of problems? Oh yes, sir, please, if you can. Okay. Because I, I'm just, I was a little worried that people will say, well, there's way too much uh, content which we have to see, but I think I'll provide one uh, for this homework and then when the next homework comes in, I should probably provide some more. Okay, let me stop here.